Christians around the world gather this day to share communion as one body, a body united in the love and the mercy of Christ. We gather with them, rejoicing in our unity in Christ. Good morning. It is good to be with you today. Let us greet one another in some of the languages that we speak. The words are printed in your order of service. You are welcome to follow along or repeat after me. Good morning. Mingalaba. Mbote. Jambo. Namaste. Magwanani. Nadama. Olagi. Teriyabiti. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Bonjour. Mwabiwe. Kajana ai. As I mentioned, it's good to be with you this morning as others are joining us in the sanctuary. And for those who will be watching the service a little bit later online, it's good to be with you too. A couple of announcements, things to draw to your attention today. Jackie has been holding her sisters group on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. There's information about that in the order of service, and if you wish, you're welcome to speak with her following the service. There's also some information here about the Dolly Parton Imagination Library that is uh, an opportunity with the Rochester City School District. And the Good We Do Together, that is a part of the event for the Greater Rochester Community of Churches, the Faith in Action Network, taking place on, I believe it is, Tuesday evening. And what is of particular interest there is that a Lifetime Achievement Award is being presented to Reverend Gordon Webster. And uh, many of you may know Gordon from his time here as interim minister about 11 and a half years ago. And uh, one of the things that is being uh, sent out is if you register, you are being required to wear masks. Uh, that is also in respect, certainly, to everybody there, but in, uh, in respect for Gordon, who has been battling COVID for two years, his hope is that he'll be able to be there, and um, that is uh, a requirement for everybody who is attending. Though you can attend online, and I don't think masks are required for that. The big thing I wanted to mention today is that at 3 o'clock this afternoon, Jane, do you have an announcement, or do you want me to do it? Me? Okay. At 3 o'clock, the Let Freedom Ring tribute con uh, concert here for uh, in honor of the Harriet Tubman Bicentennial. It's at 3 o'clock here in the church. Uh, there'll be an orchestra from, uh, and, um, from Brockport, a clarinet soloist, and the Harriet Tubman chorus. And uh, we certainly hope that everybody here can be here today. Um, we are asking that if you are attending from LABC, Please park behind Webster House if possible. We want to leave as many spots close to the church for individuals who may be coming in not aware as easily of where it is to park. And uh, we do need some volunteers, so if you are able to do so, please speak to Jane following the service. And we are excited to welcome individuals within our community to join us in this time of celebration. There is no cost to that event. Laura, do you have an announcement? And if there are any others, you are welcome to share those following me. Hello. Hello. It's your COVID advisor once again. <laughs> um, we've been watching the data from Monroe County. We are at medium transmission. Um, wish I could report that we were at low transmission. However, the guidelines from the CDC have changed, and after a period of being cautious to make sure we're not rapidly going up to a high transmission rate here in the county, um, we're going to move back to the CDC guidelines, which is the minimum we said we would adhere to. Um, those now are that those who are at high risk um, should wear masks, and other people may or may not wear masks. I would like to remind you, those of us who are over 65, and I know you guys, should be masking because we are automatically at high risk. So I will encourage you 
issues through that. Certainly, anybody who's immunocompromised or has known underlying uh, health issues should also be wearing a mask and be cautious. I also want to say that we'll continue to monitor the situation. And should Monroe County go up to high transmission, we may have to make a change to this once again. Um, the choir is choosing to remain masked at this point because we're close together and we're singing with um, gusto for you. <laughs> and uh, so we're we're being cautious up here, and we don't get quite as much air circulation as the rest of you. So, I encourage all of you to continue to be careful. COVID is not gone. Uh, over 300 people a day have died from it in this country alone. And um, none of us know ahead of time who will have a bad case of it and who will have an asymptomatic case of it. So, um, please continue to care for one another and yourself. Thank you, Laura. And if uh, anybody has any questions about that, you're welcome to speak to me or Laura. Uh, if you speak to me, I'm just going to say, please speak to Laura. <laughs> so you can save and just go to Laura, who will be able to give you all the scientific explanations around that as we seek to care for ourselves and one another. Jane. Um, thank you, Laura. Um, thank Good morning. Good morning. Good, good Sunday. Today is the Sabbath, the day given to us for rest and renewal, the day for inspiration and insight. So come, come to worship our God. Come to give praise and honor. Come to offer to the Lord our joys and our burdens. Come, let us worship in hope and in anticipation. Please pray with me. Most gracious and loving God, we ask that we may be refreshed and renewed in this time of worship. We pray that the music and spoken word might help us to see you with clearer vision, might help us discern the ways that we can be the bearers of the good news. Let our ears be keen to listen, our eyes ready to see, and our hearts open wide in awe, in wonder, and in love. We ask these in the strong name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for God to act. Don't be envious of evil men who prosper. Stop your anger, turn off your wrath. Don't fret and worry, it only leads to harm. For the wicked shall be destroyed, but those who trust the Lord shall be given every blessing. Word of the Lord. Good morning. Could I please ask that all of my young friends join me toward the front? You can sit over here or over here, whatever you like. Let's sit close together. It's a little bit easier for me. Yeah, let's sit over here. Let's sit over here. Do you want to join the morning? I'm so excited that you're all here. You look great. I hope you had a great week. Think about it. 
battle. There is no thing that doesn't use the alphabet. Everything that we have in our whole lives begins with one of the letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. The alphabet is amazing, right? Now, I have for you a little poem that I wrote. It's kind of like a song, but it's one that I made up. Right? Last week we learned about songs, P-S-A-L-M-S. What do you notice about this? It's in order. What kind of order? Yeah. Why? Why would you write a poem like that? Why would you write a poem like that? What do you think? The letters go with the words. It's really nice to remember, right? It's easy to remember something that's in alphabetical order because we all know the alphabet so well. Now, we read the Bible in English because that's a language that we all share. But in the original Bible, right, the original language, the original poem was written in alphabetical order, right? I think that is super cool. When you write something in alphabetical order like that, Aleph, Beit, when you write something in alphabetical order, you do it because you really want people to remember it. And you know that it's going to be easier for them to memorize it if it's in alphabetical order. And Psalm, one, Psalm 37, which I just read to you, is just like that. It takes someone who is very clever, a very good poet, to really write a poem like that where every letter is the beginning of a new sentence, right? And it goes down through the alphabet in order like that. The Bible is just amazing. The more you dig, the more you read, wow, there's all these treasures inside. So I want you to remember that. There are many psalms, P-X-A-L-M-S, that are like this. They're written with this special pattern. And the reason they're written that way is so that you can memorize them easily, right? All the ideas that are in there are super important. So everyone wants you to remember them when you're stressed. Like, don't worry, trust in God, everything will be okay. okay. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. We're gonna go uh, study another psalm right now. This whole month we've been doing a lot with the psalms because they're amazing. We have a song book right here. Are you ready to go to Sunday school? Okay, awesome. Good, good critical thinking, friends. I'm really excited about your critical thinking. Good participation, too. Good morning. Good morning. The next hymn that we're going to sing, uh, you may remember from the musical Godspell. It's actually a whole lot older than that. Uh, it dates back at least a couple thousand years before that, maybe as many as six. Uh, but it became something that, and I don't remember that back then, uh, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Uh, we're going to do this a little differently. The choir is going to sing the first verse in unison. Actually, it's all one verse. And then the congregation will be asked to join in on the second time around. During that second time around, Allie and Ken will come down. Allie will be directing the Ambrose Street side. Ken will direct the Jones Avenue side. And the choir will be the third side, the Lake Avenue side. And you will start over here on the third time through. When they get to the second line, you will start. When you get to the second line, the choir will begin and the choir will end. This is exciting. We should stay for this and then go for some music, okay? Let's stay for this song and then go, okay? Thank you. 
In December of 1962, the Building Council offered a report to the Church in the weekly newsletter. In it we find the following. A study of the returns shows that the influence of the minister and the worship service were the chief reasons why most people had joined the church, and a majority had stated that we should definitely expand our program for adults, youth, and ministry to the community. Almost the same majority were willing to devote more personal service and increase their pledge for this purpose. As a result, the congregation launched a $300,000 capital campaign to fund the renovation of the interior of the church and educational buildings. The campaign was kicked off with a loyalty dinner. The congregation was divided into divisions, the divisions into teams, with each division having a chair in each team, a captain. The campaign was a labor-intensive, well-oiled effort that met with great success. Here we have just a few images of some of the campaign workers who were dedicated to this building campaign. On May 9, 1963, John Ash, the chairman of the Board of Christian Education, sent a letter that said this, Our church home was old but the structure sound. Our church school facilities were rich in space but poor in arrangement and design for the modern task of teaching the sophisticated children and youth of today. Here we have a letter that was sent out with some answers to questions about our physical renewal project. And on May 19, 1963, with regard to the anticipated funding drive, in a letter from Leslie Callahan to Mr. Thayer, he renders the quote from Mr. James Wandling, Chairman of the Building Fund Committee. It says, the program goal toward which we strive will require a sacrificial support of almost all of our Christian friends if Lake Avenue is to achieve this, the most significant effort in the past 50 years in our church history. He continues in saying, the results of this program can have a deciding influence on the future of Lake Avenue in carrying forward the extension of Christian precepts for the years ahead. We may be assured of success by the devoted effort of each individual and by each of us prayerfully seeking divine guidance and strengths in meeting this challenge. As the funds were met, the demolition of the church building began. On October 4, 1964, the dedication of Lake Avenue Baptist Church took place with Marlowe Smith playing the new Casavant organ and Dr. Jean Bartlett preaching. Here we have an image of the new sanctuary and the new Casavant organ. And here we have a number of images from that dedication. It was quite fitting that the dedication took place on Worldwide Communion Sunday because it was committed to a renewal of our ministry together. In a Democrat and Chronicle article that spoke about the challenges of city ministry, we read here that we have no shortage of warnings that the inner city contains a network of the sort of problems that cry out for the kind of social, moral, and ethical guidance that churches are in a unique position to give. We commend Lake Avenue Baptist Church for committing itself both financially and morally to stay.
us. We know that there are so many needs in our community, around the country, and around the world. And we ask that you help us to remember when we give, that we're giving for the many who are in such great need. We thank you for this community here and ask that this be multiplied 70 times 7 so that it will go further. Please be seated. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. So during the presentation of our offerings, I received a couple of prayer requests. Um, the first one is uh, from Jackie. At least 170 people were killed in a stampede at a soccer game in Pakistan. Uh, and so we hold all of their families in our prayers, as well as the number of people who were uh, affected by the flooding in Cuba, Puerto Rico, Florida, and the Carolinas. And uh, a couple of other prayer requests from Jackie. A dear friend of 54 years and a neighbor of 24 years, Margaret Bryan, uh, passed away at the age of 95. We hold her family in our prayers, Jackie. And also uh, a request for Jackie's sister Sue, who's having surgery on her eardrum uh, on Tuesday. And so we lift her up in our prayers. Are there other celebrations and concerns to be shared this morning? Thank you, Jackie and C. Do we have somebody who's been requested to read this morning? We're all about communication here at Lake Avenue. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Christ Jesus, 
He has ended the power of death through the prosper, has revealed immortal life. God has appointed me as a pastor and teacher to proclaim the good news, and it is for this, this reason I am suffering this thing. But I am still full of confidence, because I know who, whom I have trusted, and I am sure that he is able to keep safe until the day what he has entrusted to me. Hold firmly to the true words that I taught you as the example of you to follow and remain in faith and love that are in our union with Christ Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in, live in us, keep the good things that you have been entrusted to you. Thank you so much, Marie and Nay. Let us pray together. Loving God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. In your name we pray. Amen. So yesterday, a number of our LABC family gathered together at our American Baptist Churches of the Rochester Genesee Region annual meeting. It just flows off the tip of your tongue. We call it ABC RGR for short. Our executive minister is Reverend Dr. Sandy Hassenauer, who's a member of LABC and I know has been part of this community for many, many years, and we thank her for her leadership. It's an opportunity for us to gather together as individual churches to connect with one another, to make decisions collectively of things we together want to commit ourselves to. Now, some of you may wonder how this fits. So just a little bit of Baptist polity, just to kind of brush up on it. Baptist churches are individual. They're autonomous, which basically means that we as a church are able to make our own decisions about pastors, about worship styles, about things that we want to do, places we want to commit our, our time, our talents, and our treasures towards in mission and ministry. But we recognize that there are things we cannot do ourselves. We want to partner together. So part of Baptist polity, things that we do, is called the associational principle, which basically means we associate, we work together in different ways and with different groups that we choose to be together with. And so this region is a number of Baptist churches in this area who are somewhat like-minded, who wish to come together and work together for various means. We recognize, though, that we are not an island unto ourselves. Today's World Communion Sunday. It's the first Sunday in October that was de designated to be World Communion Sunday. It's meant to celebrate our oneness in Christ with our brothers and our sisters around the world. Paul tells us that we are to discern the body when we partake in communion mindful that we note our relationship with others as we celebrate in our own places, in our own ways, and in our own times. And it's easy to think about just this table when we gather together for communion today. And it's easy to think about all of the good things, the things that we celebrate together. But I think, unfortunately, when we do that, when we look at World Communion Sunday only as an opportunity to celebrate together, to pat each other on the back, to say, aren't we great together, we unfortunately miss an important part about communion, an important part about our relationship with one another. You see, it's easy to think that we've got it all right in the West. It's easy to think that we need to share everything that we have with the rest of the world. It's called Western supremacism. If you want to see what that looks like, just look at the model of mission back many, many years ago, and to some degree still today. 
It was taking the Western ideas of Christianity to those people over there, or wherever over there might have been. And unfortunately, for all of the good that it has done, in some ways, it has also carried so much political strife and pain with it. Transplanting ideas from the West upon people for whom it just didn't work, or wasn't wanted, or wasn't needed. I think sometimes when we do that, we forget that we are indeed a intertwined people. So I think that World Communion Sunday needs to be a more than just the Lord's Supper, but rather remembering the relationship with one another that extends far beyond just one particular Sunday, that first Sunday in October. It's about how we relate to one another throughout our years throughout our days, throughout the ways in which we come together in mission and in ministry. So I want to focus very briefly on two verses. 2 Timothy 1, verses 7 and 8. Because I think it gives us a place of connection more than just the table. Just a reminder, Timothy was that contemporary of Paul. I spoke about Timothy last week who worked with him to share the good news of Jesus in that early church through things like these letters that we have still today that offered words of encouragement and hopefulness back then and still does so today. So 2 Timothy 1, 7 and 8 reads here. For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, or of being his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Share with one another in our burdens, in those sufferings, to stand alongside one another in the good times and in the bad times. Sometimes those difficult times for us and for others are when the boldness of good news and the power of love of God really needs to be brought to the forefront. Just as Paul was in prison for his testimony, Timothy stood beside him. We too are called to stand alongside others who are imprisoned, both physically and metaphorically, for their faith throughout the world. Not just behind bars, but in some far-off land, and here at home. It's a shared imprisonment. Think about it this way. For as much as we gather together today, and we might pray for those who are being persecuted in other countries throughout our world, there are people in other countries who may be praying for us. Because for others, maybe in the next count over, we as individuals who are in this time and in this place are living in a nation, in a world, in a community that is so often fraught with imprisonments of its own kind. We aren't just standing alongside people who are in war-torn countries who need us. We are in our own war-torn situations and need them. Let me explain. I mentioned this a couple of years ago, and I don't think this is a rare experience for a number of people in our church. Um, how many of you, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Let me put it this way. We live in the 19th ward. My dog can distinguish between the difference between a firework and a gunshot. Think about that for a second. This is a dog who, for all of his stupidity, and he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, he can distinguish by his hearing whether something is a firework or a gunshot, which means he has heard enough of each to be able to know that one is good and worthy of reaction, firework, and one is bad, and for him, not worthy of responding at all. 
How many of us in our own communities have become deaf to the violence in our streets? Another murder just a few blocks from my house, and I know I'm not alone in saying it. The reality is, is that for as much as we might lift up other communities because of needs that we think they have, there are others this morning who are praying for us in our community because of needs we have. The violence in our streets, the poverty, the drug abuse. We aren't just standing alongside people in war-torn areas. We too, in the eyes of many, are in one ourselves. So world communion, it's not just about sharing the good things around the table, but sharing with one another in all things, good and bad, joys and celebrations, concerns and burdens, and to realize that we are not superior in doling out support, but rather we need it too. With our friends throughout our world who are gathering around this table with us today as family, not just as a one-time deal that takes place on the first Sunday of October, but in all times. So we need to be united in the communion of the saints throughout our world, in exhibiting a renewed boldness, sharing that extravagant love and the power of the name of Christ throughout our world. Because it is through that, through that connectivity, through building each other up, through supporting one another and caring for one another and really living into this boldness of Christ, that I think we're going to start to see changes in our world. So easy to throw up our hands and say, you know what? It's too much. It's too easy to bury our heads in the sand and say, I don't want to deal with the realities of the world around us. But I think we need to look at this communion table as an opportunity for us to reaffirm our commitment to one another, to ourselves as individuals, and our communities throughout the world. And I think in doing that, we're truly going to live into what worldwide communion can be. Not just a communion table, but a communion of saints. A community that extends beyond this table and into all the ends of the earth. One community, unified, not just by a meal, but by that which the meal symbolizes. The unlimited, incredibly extending love. I invite you to turn with me in your order of service, where you'll find a communion lit. May it be a reminder for each of us how we are invited to approach the table today. With communion, Christians around the world come to the festival of love. We come with thanksgiving and praise. With believers from every continent on the earth, come to the festival of grace. We come with thanksgiving and praise. With the whole body of Christ, come to the festival of life. We come with thanksgiving and praise. This is a place where each one of us is invited. This is a place where we come not just to gather as Lake Avenue Baptist Church, but to gather as the communion of saints here and alongside others. Others who we pray will lift, be lifted up by our prayers and lift us up in prayers. Others who we pray will celebrate with us as we celebrate with them, but also share in our collective burdens together and be sharing in our collective commitment to worship, to praise, to mission, to service, and to love. You are welcome at this table. Let us sing together, What is this place? <laughs>
servers today. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord took a loaf of bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim Christ's death until he comes. Let us give thanks. God of love, we thank you for this symbol. The symbol of your body, the symbol of your blood, broken and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. We pray that you would bless our presence here today in the company of the saints, saints around the world. And Lord, as we gather together today, may we be blessed to be a blessing for you. In Jesus' name.
them for us. And today, may we be reminded that we do not just come together once a year to connect with others around the world, but truly we are connected in faith, in love, and in service. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us sing together, O Day of Peace. Thank you.